from CBS4 News. This is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Welcome to Facing South Florida. I'm Jim DeFeedy, and we begin today's show with the insurance crisis in the state of Florida. The legislature ends its regular 60-day session on Monday, and while it is focused on fighting culture wars against gays, immigrants, and the supposed evils of critical race theory, insurance rates for homeowners keep going up as more and more insurance companies are abandoning the state. This week, I spoke to State Senator Jeff Brandis from St. Petersburg, who has been critical of his fellow Republicans for ignoring the real issues affecting the everyday lives of people in Florida. I started by asking him if there is indeed an insurance crisis in Florida. Absolutely. I think it's a crisis on consumers. Uh, you know, we've had the consumer advocates say that the insurance industry and consumers are on life support. Uh, and what we see is 30% rate increases every year for consumers going forward. Uh, that is a huge problem. And if anybody doesn't believe that rates doubling every few years isn't a problem, I don't know what, I don't know what else to tell them. Uh, but we're in a, in a state of absolute crisis in our property insurance. Citizens' property insurance uh, two years ago had about 480,000 policies. It now has 800,000 policies just a year and a half later. Uh, and we expect that to be at over a million policies by the end of the year. In the meantime, we're losing insurance carriers. Carriers are pulling out of the state. Investors are not investing in Florida. Uh, the industry as a whole lost $1.5 billion in 2020. It lost, lost $1.6 billion in, uh, in 2021. Uh, and so this is a market that's, that's in collapse. Why are the companies leaving and why are they losing money? Sure, it's, it's a combination of bad law, bad court cases, and and fraud and and the trial bar uh we have roof claims in south or sorry uh, water claims in south florida right now are the major problem uh in the south florida area but roof claims in central florida have you know have really metastasized throughout the state to where florida sees a hundred thousand lawsuits last year a hundred thousand the average for every other state is less than a thousand florida represents eight percent of total u.s property claims but we are almost 82% of property litigation throughout the United States occurs in Florida. So we are just, you know, basically we don't have an insurance industry anymore. We have a litigation management industry. I hear from consumers that the, that the process to try to get a claim approved is they almost immediately meet with a denial and are forced into litigation, they believe, by the insurance companies thinking that the insurance companies will just ultimately wear down consumers who are seeking rightful compensation and that that's the issue here. Yeah, so what we see is these insurers operate in multiple states and they don't have these types of problems in many of the other states. Why? Because the incentives are aligned there to address these problems. In Florida, the incentive is to sue. Up until last year, there was the problem of one-way attorney's fees, which said if you got a dollar more than what the insurance company offered you as a settlement, then the insurance company had to pay all your legal fees. So we have attorneys who are filing 100 lawsuits a day, playing the numbers games, knowing that they're going to get some of their legal fees paid for if it comes in for a dollar more than what we ask. We have examples of a $150 claim uh, that was, was settled, and the, in, the attorney's fees were $40,000. So these types of things um, are, are regular. We know there's fraud in the system. The state's not doing enough to fight fraud. But honestly, it's just misaligned incentives. Uh, throughout the state of Florida that are causing this with a combination of a legislature that is impotent to act, a, a court that has had a couple of bad court decisions, and frankly, a trial bar that is voracious, as is any state in the country. Well, I guess, I guess probably the better question for me to ask is rather than sort of look at one side or the other, whether or not you agree that the insurance companies are victims here or that the trial lawyers are the bad guys is, you would think that a legislative session that is 60 days with two or three months before that of committee hearings would have taken a deep dive on this issue uh, and started tackling it on day one of session. Why didn't that happen this year? Absolutely. Look, th this bill should have been worked on eight months ago. And yet here we are on the 60th day of session in negotiations with the House on what, what the insurance industry should look like going forward. I think we're headed towards a special session. I think it's been an absolute disaster of a year in the property insurance world, uh, at least on the policy front. Uh, but at the end of the day, look, the legislature dropped the ball on property insurance this year. There's no doubt about that. But it's going to take the governor to get engaged at a much deeper level uh, and really force the hand of the House and the Senate 
to put some meaningful insurance uh, reforms on the books. Because without that, you're going to lose more companies, consumers are going to have less choices, and prices are going to rise. I think what the number is, I saw recently, there are six companies that have announced they're pulling out of Florida just in the last couple of months, correct? That's correct. And we've had companies go to the Office of Insurance Regulation and ask for 100% rate increases. So we, it, it is all hands on deck around here. Uh, and unfortunately, we have some members that are still sleeping below deck. Well, so let's broaden the conversation out because this is the point that that I've made, you know, when I talk about this year's session, as we focus so much time and attention on the so-called culture war issues, whether it's, it's the Stop Woke Act, the Don't Say Gay Bill, immigration, whatever you want to want to deal with, that that ends up sucking up all the time in the session where meaningful issues, property insurance, you know, whether it's insur property insurance or the affor affordable housing, those are the big issues that I think voters are more interested in hearing, and yet they're not being addressed. Why aren't they being addressed? Well, look, my concern about this year going in was it was going to be a red meat year, a red meat year, but it was not going to be a state red meat year. It was going to be a national red meat year. And that's exactly how it played out. It's the, we're taking on national issues that are that are on the edges. You know, they're, you know, the state of Florida getting involved in the immigration world, getting involved in, you know, the Stop Woke Act, uh, the Don't Say Gay Bill, those types of kind of nationalized issues that are meant for the national audience. Meanwhile, you know, we have real problems in property insurance and in auto insurance and in, in a housing, making housing more affordable. Uh, in, in just so many different areas, the criminal justice system, our prison system is falling apart. So we have, we have a ton of different areas, but this just wasn't a policy heavy uh, year. I mean, I kind of go harken back to the old Wendy's commercial where the lady opens up the bun and said, where's the beef? That's kind of how I felt about this legislative session. The, you know, you're someone who actually does have a reputation to stand up um, to leadership and to vote your conscience on on, on measures. As I said, you voted against the, the don't say gay bill. I think, uh, you know, whether or not you want to uh, you know, explain, you don't have to explain, but your thoughts behind the immigration bill or the Stop Woke Act. As you sort of weigh how to vote on these measures, what calculus goes through your mind? Well, first of all, I, I, you know, the immigration bill, for example, it really doesn't do anything. Uh, and so it's really a title only kind of bill. There, it doesn't stop uh, the federal government from for moving people to Florida, although that was its quoted intent. Uh, but the don't say gay bill, they the, their the challenge they had there was whether or not they had an intent for kids in K through three not to hear about certain activities. We the impact was felt by a much broader community, and so we could have resolved that. For example, I had filed an amendment that said, "Listen, we're not going to talk about any type of sexual activity." Uh, or human sexuality between kindergarten and third grade. It covered all the basis, uh, and it would not have had nearly the impact that the 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 original legislation had because it would, by would stigmatizing by stigmatizing the LGBT community. Correct. That's the way it became. That's became that's really it. So if we had covered everybody and just said, "Listen, these are parent these are conversations best left to be at home with your parents," um, between before before you're eight years old. Uh, I think everybody kind of generally agreed with that, and it would have accomplished the goal uh, that the the sponsors had originally intended. But they wanted the impact, and that's the problem, right? And and so it's all about they wouldn't have gotten the the red meat credit had they just accepted that amendment. And, and it's important to note nobody was teaching you know, correct. Uh, sexual I mean, orientation or sexual identity in K through third grades. This wasn't right, something right. that there was, that it was being discussed in second grade classrooms or kindergarten classrooms anywhere. So these were, these were, you know, solutions in search of a problem in most so of many this, of these cases correct, that didn't right. exist. Look, I think most of this, a lot of this legislation this year was solutions in search of a problem. We, we have a lot of challenges in the state of Florida. Uh, property insurance being number one, you know, at the top of the tier right now because we're 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 kind of at a point of a tipping point right now. Uh, I would say making housing more affordable. You know, look, the the state does zero research <laughs> in how to make housing more affordable. It does zero research in property insurance. It does zero research in criminal justice, and yet we come up here and make all of these different policies without identifying the best practices, having done any additional research and working on these types of, and, and kind of using experts to work on these types of issues. We changed the entire state of Florida's solar practices without a study. 
without talking to experts. I mean, it is absolutely uh, uh, kind of almost insane to think that your state government, your board of directors for the state is doing these massive policy moves without data, research, and best practices to support them. But it's one of my major challenges. I, look, I've been doing this for 12 years now, and my last day of my last session today. Uh, and so to me, what, what I've recognized in, in Tallahassee is most things in Tallahassee are tactical and not strategic. They, we aren't playing to a larger strategy. We aren't using industry best practices, looking at research. We're just tactically getting through the next 60 days uh, and, and oftentimes it doesn't play to a larger strategy. And we don't know the, whether we're moving the, yard the ball 10 yards forwards or getting sacked for five yards uh, because we aren't looking at what is the best practice, what is the goal, and we aren't stating where the goal line is. When we come back, we are joined by Democratic State Senator Chevron Jones as we discuss the harm caused by the so-called Don't Say Gay Bill. 